Hello, everybody. It is November 2nd, 2021. Today's afternoon devotional and Bible study. We'll be reading through the book of Revelation, chapter 17. Uh, the Great Prostitute is what it's called. Um, but before we get to that, we're going to be reading through Jesus is Calling for today, November 2nd. Um, yeah, and when I woke up today, it looked really sunny. I was like, oh, maybe this will be a good day to cut, do it outside because those days are getting fewer and fewer and fewer. And yeah, it started to rain a little bit. So uh, it seems like the rain stopped, but I'm just like, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come back inside. Um, so here we are. Uh, yeah, so November 2nd, Jesus is Calling. It's a book written by Sarah Young, written as if Jesus is talking to you. Um, I'm going to try talking a little bit quieter. I think the mic likes it when I talk a little bit quieter. So, sorry for coming at you with energy. Uh, and yes, if you see that something starting above my lip, I'm trying to grow out a mustache. I don't think it'll happen. But, you yeah. know... Movember and all that jazz, right? All right. Uh, so without further ado, Jesus is calling for November 2. Grow strong in the light of my presence. Your weakness does not repel me. On the contrary, it attracts my power, which is always available to flow into a yielded heart. Do not condemn yourself for your constant need of help instead come to me with your gaping needless ne neediness let the light of my love fill you a yielded heart does not whine or rebel when the going gets rough it musters the courage to thank me even during hard times, yielding yourself to my will is ultimately an act of trust. In quietness and trust is your strength. And that was inspired by three different sections of the Bible. The Lord is gracious and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. The Lord protects the simple-hearted. And I was in great need. He saved me. Be at rest once more, O oh, my soul, for the Lord has been good to you. Psalm 116, 5-7 Always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Ephesians 5, 2, 20, sorry. And lastly, this is what the Sovereign Lord, the Holy One of Israel, says. In repentance and rest is your salvation. In quietness and trust is your strength. But you would have none of it. Isaiah 30, 15. A. Langley, welcome once again. I jumped in right during the middle of the devotional there. Uh, it was a pretty good one. Um, it was that reminder that our weakness does not repel God. Um, it's actually on the contrary. When we acknowledge our weakness, we can invite God into it and he can do some pretty awesome things through it. Um, and once again, this devotional is, you know, a good example of that because I'm dyslexic. I can't read no real good. Uh, you heard me stumbling through, uh, you know, those couple paragraphs there. If you join with me, I... Off, I'm not the best reader in the world. I actually have a learning disability there, right? Um, but it's in my weakness that I'm inviting God into, uh, which attracts his power, as the devotional was saying, and that's how this is a thing. So uh, if you know, you're just joining me for one of these or you've been a part of a lot of these, um, you know, it's... A daily devotional. Um, I know not everyone is as committed as I am <laughs> um, uh, when it comes to it, but hopefully, you know, if this is an encouragement for you to just get into your Bible, start reading it for yourself, that's awesome. If this can be that nudge for you to connect, and if you need a Bible, 
I can't believe I haven't actually offered this in a little while, but like I can hook you up with a Bible. Um, I do like the physical Bible over the digital Bible. Uh, digital Bibles have a lot of really cool uh, features with it when it comes to like reading plans, devotionals. Uh, there's like a social element to it where you can like uh, highlight pictures, make comments, and try to encourage conversations around different Bible verses like, hey, I'm confused about this. What does this mean? And put it out to your friends and so on and so forth. Um, so that's on like the U version Bible, which is actually pretty good. Uh, Bible Gateway is also there, and it is the first snow. The rain has turned to snow. Uh, you're seeing this live, folks. The first snow of the winter of 2021-2022 is happening right now. Just started. Uh, snow, rain turned to snow. Um, it's not sticking to the grass or anything yet. Still it's with the wind at zero but it's not zero yet so it's not sticking to the ground anyways to all sidetracked by the snow um i invite you guys to open up your bibles to revelation chapter 17 um it in my bible it's the one labeled the great prostitute so if you came in and you wanted to know about the great prostitute now is your chance um, don't know, uh, I'm, I'm not recalling what this is about, um, so as we get into it, hopefully, uh, something will come up. There's a lot of, uh, red letters in here, um, and in a lot of Bibles, um, red letters are the things that are either, like, Jesus' name or what he says or, uh, his titles are often... Uh, written in red ink uh, to signify kind of like the blood of the lamb type deal uh, and so on and so forth and then in this particular bible blue letters is the old testament stuff that points to jesus so it's kind of like this cool red and blue uh, thing going on in my bible uh, and a lot of bibles do have the, that red letter uh for Jesus and for God, like really jumping out. So you know what's like a direct quote or something like that, or a direct reference to Jesus. Um, it, it's written in blue, like King of Kings, Lord of Lords, the Lamb, and Jesus are things I just see in red right now. Um, so don't know what uh, The Great Prostitute is about. Don't really remember it. But you know what? It's the best way to figure it out. Let's jump into it. Let's actually start reading Revelation chapter 17. The Great Prostitute. One of the seven angels who had poured out the seven bowls came over and spoke to me. Come with me, he said, and I will show you the judgment that is going to come on the great prostitute who rules over many waters. The king of the the, sorry, the kings of this world have committed adultery with her, and the people who belong to this world have been made drunk by the wine of her immorality. So the angel took me in the spirit into the wilderness. There I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast that had seven heads and ten horns, and blasphemes against God were written all over it. The woman wore purple and scarlet clothing and beautiful jewelry made of gold and precious gems and pearls. In her hand she had a gold goblet full of obscenities and the impurities of her immorality. A mysterious name was written on her forehead, Babylon the Great mother of all prostitutes and obscenities in the world. I could see that she was drunk, drunk with the blood of God's holy people who were witnesses for Jesus. I stared at her in complete amazement. Why are you amazed? The angel asked. I will tell you the mystery of this woman and the beast with seven heads and ten horns on which she sits. The beast you saw was once alive, 
but isn't now. And yet he will soon come up out of the bottomless pit and go into eternal destruction. And the people who belong to this world, whose names were not written in the book of life before the world was made, will be amazed at the reappearance of this beast who had died. This calls for a mind with understanding. The seven heads of the beast represent seven hills where the woman rules. They also represent seven kings. Five kings have already fallen. The sixth now reigns. And the seventh is yet to come, but his reign will be brief. And the scarlet beast that was, but is no longer, is the eighth king. He is like the other seven, and he too is headed for destruction. The ten horns on the beast are ten kings who have not yet risen to power. They will be appointed to their kingdoms for one brief moment to reign with the beast. They will all agree to give him their power and authority. Together, they will go to war against the Lamb. But the Lamb will defeat them because he is the Lord of all lords and the King of all kings. And his called and chosen and faithful ones will be with him. Then the angel said to me, the waters where the prostitute is ruling represent masses of people of every nation and language. The scarlet beast and his ten horns all hate the prostitute. They will stir her naked, uh, sorry, they will strip her naked, eat her flesh, and burn her remains with fire. For God has put a plan into their minds, a plan that will carry out his purpose. They will agree to give their authority to the scarlet beast, and so the words of God will be fulfilled. And this woman you saw in your vision represents the great city that rules over the kings of the world. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. Cool. All right. Wow. All right. So, this great prostitute, um, you know, it once again using um, very human imagery for these big spiritual things, but also for these big national things. Um, one of the things that we've seen as we've been reading uh, this this reminds me a lot of how Ezekiel was written, but these grand things about nations um, and stuff going on in the biblical realm are broken down into uh, one of the closest human counterparts. So um, in this, there is a city that rules the world and people are pledging their allegiance to it. And these kings or these, these world leaders um, are pledging allegiance to this, this city. And um, with the corruption and everything going on with it, um, you're seeing uh, it happen. And this is, and the city is sitting on top of the fallen beast, almost like, okay, yeah, that beast has been destroyed. So this is like getting into some of that spiritual realm stuff. The beast has been destroyed, and I'm standing on the backs of the beast. And, you know, like, so she's sitting there and she's just basically cursing everyone. I have all the power. I have all the money. I got all the authority. I have all the... Come here and, you know, your greatest desires are going to be fulfilled. You know, what stays in Vegas stays in Vegas, baby. You can do whatever you want here. Sin is what we offer type deal. Um, or like in Amsterdam and like there are cities that are known for, you know, attracting people from all over the world, um, you know, because of their sin markets. Um, and one of their big pushes 
in these sin markets is prostitution. So that's kind of what's happening today and why even back when this was written, um, you know, about 50 years after Christ died on the cross, um, why even back then this was still... Um, it, it Back then, it was a metaphor that made sense and it still makes sense today because we have cities like this in our world today that you know business people world leaders will go to these cities make these deals and partake uh probably i don't know for sure uh i'm not a world leader i'm not super uh into a lot of that stuff but uh you have most likely world leaders or their supporters or their influencers going to these cities of sin or they're having these summits in these cities of sin you know, which attract people because of their gambling, their prostitution, their relaxed laws on this, that, and the other. Um, and, you know, they're partaking in it. So these these decisions and these rulers are... It, it, it's happening. Uh, so a part where I got a little bit lost is, like, they're all pledging their allegiance to either her or to the beast but then there's a crown of people that hate her and are gonna like end up destroying her and eating her flesh and i'm like wait what what's going on so i'm gonna read it a little bit slower uh so that i understand it a little bit more uh so i want to start with uh verse nine so, um, this calls for a mind with understanding. The seven heads of the beast represent the seven hills where the woman rules. They also represent seven kings. So, don't necessarily know exactly what the hills are. Are they physical hills? Are they a metaphor for something? I'm not 100% sure. Uh, but seven kings, seven world leaders, um, is what the seven our heads represent so these seven different factions seven hills seven areas of territory maybe um is what this beast rules over seven laws perhaps i don't know uh five kings have already fallen the six now reigns so it's not necessarily world leaders at a single time it seems like it might just be like well there's five rulers here's a sixth one for this time so uh you know and then there's still the seventh yet to come so is this rulers um are, are kings is it like one per generation or or you know sprinkled throughout time like okay this king is doing it now this king is doing it or is it like world leaders generational world leaders right like so you know, this king is reigning, this judgment is reading, uh, reigning, or is it like nations? Like, you know, um, China used to be one of the world's like ruling things. Then it was like Britain and then Rome and the United States is now the world superpower and so on and so forth. Um, does it mean something like that? Maybe. Um, definitely interesting. Don't know. But the sixth one now reigns. Uh, in this time, in this vision. Uh, the Scarlet Beast that was, but is no longer, is the eighth king. So this is a, a king that had fallen and is now re-rising. He is like the other seven, and he too is headed for destruction. So even though he rises in power, God already knows he's going to head for destruction this king, this ruler, this nation, whatever it is. The ten horns of the beast are ten kings who have not yet risen to power. So there's ten horns, and they all represent these ten future kings, uh, or kingdoms, or what have you. They will be appointed to their kingdoms for one brief moment to reign with the beast. So they're going to be in connection with the beast. 
the beast seems to be um, a metaphor and an analogy with uh, Lucifer, with with Satan, um, uh, the Antichrist. So uh, anti-Christian rhetoric and movement is like what they're partnered with or undermining. Like, yes, 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 let's all follow the Bible. Let's all follow Jesus and do nothing of what he said. I'm going to talk the talk, but undermine it so you guys think that I'm walking the walk. But I'm going to not walk the walk myself and lead a bunch of people away from walking the walk. Which seems to be happening in a lot of parts of the world right now. Uh, they will agree to give their power and authority. Together, they will go to war against the Lamb. But the Lamb will defeat them because he is the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. And is, and his called and chosen are faithful ones to uh will be with him so essentially i'm reading this as these kings that will give their power to the beast i see it more as um a mental war not uh yeah let's get in our tanks um but because you know god is god he is true. He is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords. He's not going to fail. And the ones that know him, that really know his voice, they're going to stay strong. They're going to stay on that path. And there's going to be success for them. And these kings that rage war against our minds aren't going to win. Um, then the angel said to me, the waters where the prostitute is ruling represent masses of people of every nation and language. So this is also a callback to the sea that was in the temple, right? Um, and it's just talking like, yeah, so there might be these people that are talking this big talk, doing all of this. And like even in today's world, there's this sense of like, oh, the church is really struggling and it's really failing. And it's like, but no, globally, the church, like, Christians are all over the world. We're not just, you know, whatever your current understanding of what a typical Christian is. We are so much diverse, so many more languages, so much, uh, like, widespread than what that base understanding is uh, in North America. Um, we are, so there's that reminder of that global Christ movement. Um, that's going on. The scarlet beast and his ten horns and all hate the prostitute. They will strip her naked and eat her flesh and burn her remains with fire. For God has put a plan into their minds, a plan that will carry out his purposes. They will agree to give their authority to the scarlet beast. And so the words of God will be fulfilled. And this woman you saw in your vision represents a great city that rules over the kings of this world. So, um, with that, it seems like you have this beast that has fallen that she's sitting upon that's going to rise again. You have these kingdoms coming up that are seemingly in line with what she wants but they all hate her for some reason they all hate this city um they all hate this this ruling class and this mindset so they're going to go to war against it where like if it is like this actual physical city you know uh marketing is going to stop maybe flights stop going there like they're going to cut off the lifelines to the city and burn it to the ground by the sounds of it. Um, and, you know, so this thing, but they're all pledging allegiance to, you know, the beast, the Antichrist, by the sounds of it. But Christ knows what's going on. Uh, there's a part where, in the Bible, uh, in the Gospels, where uh, Jesus... Um, commands demons to come out of somebody and uh 
then Jesus talks about a house divided against itself will fall. And, um, you know, it's talking about how, like, eventually, if you're just in it for your own self, and, like, the other people around you are just in it for your own self, it's all going to fall. Uh, so this sounds like that. So, yes, they kind of seem like they're on their own side, but they're all kind of went in business for themselves. Now they start attacking each other uh, for that power and so on and so forth to the point where it sounds like they start destroying themselves is what ends up happening. That's what it sounds like to me. And uh, if I remembered what the actual Bible reference was for what I was talking about, because that's people... Oh, Jesus only kicked that... Uh, you know, demon out because, you know, he is himself a demon. It's like, no, no, no. Jesus said, a house, you know, that's divided against itself will surely fall. And, um, I don't even know if I actually have that part right. I might have it in a different part, but essentially, uh, he starts talking like if the devil's just casting himself out, then, you know, it's going to be mighty pointless at the end of the day. <laughs> Um, and it'll lead to, you know, ruin, and he's a little bit smarter than that. Um, it's kind of what I'm getting out of it, but, like, God is so much greater, so much better, so much more powerful, um, and that's, like, the big, big picture stuff that I'm seeing. Um, but, uh, yeah, so what does this mean for us right now? That's a little bit tough. This is very futuristic, very in a lot of different ways, but I think it's a reminder that when people are just telling you what you want to hear, it might not be for your benefit. People are just telling you what you want to hear. It could be very easily manipulation. Um, when we're talking about the great prostitute and how she's like twisting and turning hearts and rebelling against God and just almost like, you know, she's feasting on the dead beast and so on and so forth. But like all the while, maybe even empowering the beast to come back. And, you know, she doesn't realize the power that she's enabling the people that are going to destroy her. Right? So, um, there's a lot of that, like, kind of self interest power that comes into it. And when we think about, um, you know, these, um, sin markets, if you will, um, you know, it's all about do this and, you know, you just, you do, you have this experience and then you leave it there. You know, it's not going to come back and follow you. You know, you can do it moral free, like guilt free. And, um, that's not the case, right? You know, um, what you've done. If you go and you do something awful and you're like, but it was in this city, like, therefore I don't have to worry. But no, that's not true. Cause you were there, you know what you've done. If I went to, you know, one of those cities and I ended up having a prostitute and I came home. One, I would know that I cheated on my wife. And two, if I got like an SD or TD or something like that, you know, I would pass it on to my wife. Um, you know, so it doesn't stay there, but they market it like that. Um, and those like that, it stays with you, um, even though they tell you it doesn't. Um, but they give you, they paint this picture and this illusion of guilt free sin of consequence free sin that's really what they're trying to sell they're trying to sell consequence free sin and you know what that's not real um if they don't think god is there god is definitely still in those cities um i've met people that serve uh god in the red light district in amsterdam and like that's their mission is they go there and they share Jesus in very real tangible ways they help uh you know the men and women that are you know caught up in selling themselves uh to find God 
um, and the people that buy and use and abuse to find God. And they have some pretty awesome things that are happening there. Um, you know, so like God is still in these, um, sin markets and he's finding ways in and his light and his hope is still very, very present. Um, and like, I've heard testimonies from people that have left the adult film industry and, um, I actually have like a Bible from a uh, triple X church, which is, um, this church movement about, uh, anti-pornography and stuff. Um, and, uh, there was someone that went to a show that was, uh, they were in the church they were like the one of their Christian friends and they went in there and they're like, this isn't good for me. And they felt convicted when they walked in and they saw this triple X church booth because they went in for those selfish desires and that promise of guilt free consequence free sin is what, um, they, they walked into and what their mindset was. And then they saw this booth and they're like, yeah, I fooled myself and they went over and they grabbed a bunch of Bibles and they brought a couple back for me. <laughs> they told me the story. Um, but you know, at the end of the day, our sin led to Jesus on the cross and he willingly laid down his life for you. Um, so yeah, that practical reminder is one, if people just tell us what we want to hear, Take it with a little bit of grain of salt and don't just blindly follow because you don't know where they're leading and what their motivation is. Um, and and two, don't be fooled into consequence-free sin because at the very least, your sin lets Jesus' death on the cross. He's forgiven you and he will forgive you. But that doesn't mean that you have to add to it. Let's pray. AJC, awesome Jesus Christ. I thank you that you are everywhere, that you're making inroads even in these sin markets. That um, as we try to understand what's happening uh, in the book of Revelations, uh, in this chapter, as you're using a metaphor for the city, um, as you did in Ezekiel for uh, the tribe, uh, and, uh, like the, the two, oh, they were two cities, um, uh, as they were, uh, you know, these sisters that, uh, ended up becoming great prostitutes. You use this metaphor again, and it's one that we can understand. And when you give us the, the translation of it being the city, you know, we can connect it to cities in our own day and time that have these. So Lord, help us to not want to go there to escape from morality and to escape from sin and consequences. Lord, if we ever find ourselves in those places, let us find you in a brand new way. Lord, let us stop running, try, stop running from you and start running towards you. Help us when, you know, we get depressed, when we feel anxiety, when we feel guilt to look to you as you, Lord, help to melt that away because we are made perfect through you. Yeah, you have forgiven. You will forgive. You died on the cross because of our sin. Help us to not get in these mindsets where we just want to add to it where we want to run away from you and from ourselves and our responsibilities and just be like, yeah, I'm going to sin for a little while and have these really bad release valves that just lead to more pain and more suffering. They're good for a short amount of time and then they get bad. They taste sweet in our mouths and turn vile in our stomach. Lord, help us to find things that turn good in our stomachs. Help us to learn to enjoy 
broccoli and spinach and like other vegetables that might not necessarily taste good at first but become great for our bodies help us to enjoy that taste so that we can embrace those things that are good help us to cut out and cut down on those sugars oh why am i doing a food metaphor um anyways lord yeah it's a good example um but lord help us help us to find things that feed our souls and that can draw us closer to you and closer to each other um and i don't mean physically even though that is definitely part of it um as with the pandemic and us all being so physically distant but being closer spiritually being closer in love for one another not seeing people as obstacles in the way but subjects worthy of study thank you lord help us to you know act justly to love mercy and to walk humbly with you lord and let us not just listen to things that sound good and that are saying what we want to hear and echoing our own thoughts and never being corrected, never being guided and just shutting people out that disagree with us. But help us to be in communities where we have healthy balance, where we can come in with these different ideas and understandings of you and have these things that we... <sighs> to get clear pictures of you as we have those diverse conversations. I don't have to go into metaphors because that's all I'm really trying to say, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for a book that's difficult to read and understand that we can let our imaginations go a little bit wild as we try to figure out what it is that you're saying, why you gave this vision, why you want to share it, and how can we follow it. Today just really seems like a warning and a reassurance that you see us as we do what we want to do and a reassurance that we are not alone as we try to follow you and we seem to be in a society that doesn't understand you, doesn't care about you or misrepresents you, that there is a vast sea of people from every nation, every tribe, every race, every language that worships you, Lord. Thank you for reassuring that, that we are not alone and that you are the ultimate victor. You have already won and you're inviting us to jump into the game when you've already won. Doesn't mean things aren't gonna get tough but the victory is assured. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Amen. All right. Well, have a fantastic day. God bless. Um, yeah. Look forward to reading through the next chapter tomorrow. Bye.